So I was scrolling down my Twitter feed when I came across a tweet from Boogie2988, and uh, this tweet was liked by Vsauce, and uh, Boogie says, makes you think, and beneath his caption is a copy of Girl's Life and a copy of Boy's Life. And we can see that girl's life is all about fashion and beauty, and boy's life is all about technology and exploring your future. And we're supposed to draw the inference here that uh, this is very sexist of our society. I also found this article called The Difference Between Girl's Life and Boy's Life magazine covers is infuriating. Strange, I don't seem to be infuriated. But uh, let's get back to what Boogie said. Makes you think. Makes you think. Hmm, but does it really? It doesn't really seem like too much thinking went into this to me. I did a little digging in this juxtaposition isn't really as damning as it might initially appear because when you see this uh, image, you're supposed to think, wow, look at how content is different for boys than it is, it is for girls. And, um, you know, oh, it's, it's so sexist, it's so wrong. And look at all these horrible lessons we teach young girls and all the positive lessons we teach young boys. This, of course, ignores the fact that... Uh, Girls in America academically outperform boys at this point. Um, but the thing, the thing about this, this juxtaposition is that these um, magazines, other than having similar names, don't really have much to fucking do with each other. Boys Life magazine uh, is published by the Boy Scouts of America and was founded in 1911. Girls Life is published by a woman named Karen Bachram, who founded the magazine in 1994. One is published out of Irving, Texas... That's, that would be uh, Boy's Life. And one is published out of Baltimore. That'd be Girl's Life. Uh, now, the content of Girl's Life is not really as vapid as what's being presented here in this picture. According to Wikipedia, Girl's Life covers a range of topics from heavier topics, such as dealing with racism, sexual abuse, and feelings for boys, as well as lighter topics, such as fashion, beauty, skin care, embarrassing moments. There are often recipes, gift ideas, and interviews. The content of Boy's Life is not as lofty as what is being presented in this picture either. Uh, this is from their Wikipedia. The Boy's Life geared towards older boys features buying guides for products such as cars, MP3 players, digital cameras, sunglasses, and more. Yeah, these buyer's guides for products, i.e. Um, advertising in disguise. Boy's Life features a video game section, which, in addition to uh, new video game reviews, contains cheats for a video game monthly. They also contain technology updates as well as book reviews. Content includes special features, adventure stories, Bank Street classics, entertainment, environmental issues, history, sports, and Codemaster. Uh, I visited the advertising materials for both Girls' Life and Boys' Life. I found that Girls' Life has a rate base of uh, 350,000 copies. That's how many actual issues come out whenever they put out a new issue. Um, and a total readership that they pretty dubiously estimate to be uh, 1,890,000. I say that this number is dubious because they're assuming that each copy of their magazine is read by about 5.4 people. Yeah, right. No, it's not. Uh, their target audience is girls age 12 to 17. The median household income of their subscribers' households is $83,000. Now, Boys Life has a rate base of 1 million and a readership of 3.8 million. Uh, they publish two magazines. One is geared towards boys 6 to 11, and one is geared towards boys 12 to 17. I couldn't find any information about the household incomes of their subscribers, but I presume that if they're sh giving you buying guides to cars and MP3 players and all that, that it's probably also pretty high. Um, so let's look at this image again. These magazines, uh, these magazines here that we're being invited to compare against one another, they're not published by the same publisher. They don't have the same history. Uh, they really don't have anything to do with one another other than having similar names. Uh, this is like comparing Braveheart and Dragonheart, just because they both have the word heart in them. Yeah, well, one is about uh, a Scottish revolution and the other is about dragons. So they're not really all too similar. I guess they both take place in the past and they're both movies, just like these two magazines are both targeted towards a specific gender and they're both magazines, 
But those are pretty fucking superficial differences once you actually get into the meaty nuance of what these magazines represent, uh, what vantage point they're coming from, so on and so forth. Further, um, Boy's Life, as I said, covers lofty subjects, sure, like history and science, but it also covers sports and video games, and there's even some terrible Christian comics in there, from what I understand. Girl's Life, uh, they might cover some shallow, vapid stuff, or things that you consider to be shallow and vapid, like makeup and fashion. Um, I don't know how you can even consider those shallow and vapid when so many women make their careers in those industries. Um, but it also covers racism, sexual abuse, academic success, time management, and all, all kinds of other shit like that. So it's not like this, this, this idea that, oh, we can look at this cover and we know that boys' life is full of good, positive messages and girls' life is so problematic. It's, you know, you're, you're, what you're doing is, um, and I find this funny, folks like Boogie, what they're doing is they're actually advocating for judging a book by its cover. I mean, you ever, you ever hear as a little fucking goddamn kid, don't judge a book by its cover? Well, that's what we're now being encouraged to do. There's no examination uh, of what these two magazines are or what they represent, their unique histories, their unique approaches, or even their actual content. We're supposed to just take one look at these two covers juxtaposed side by side, and we're just supposed to judge it sexist. We're invited to make unfounded assumptions based on minimal information. And Vsauce, Vsauce, an educational channel, liked this shitty tweet. An educational channel uh, put the blinders on and invited us to rush to judgment without having all the facts. Or hell, without even having most of the facts. Without even having a good chunk of the facts. Literally just, here's what the cover of this one looks like. Here's what the cover of this one looks like. Put them side by side and judge them through the lens of tumblery, twittery, third wave, fourth wave, retard wave, fucking feminism. Uh, to me, that's fucking shameful. That's shameful that we have uh, Vsauce, an educational channel, saying, yep, this is a good, solid, uh, informative, educational tweet. We have Boogie, who uh, is, is a popular YouTuber, saying, wow, this really makes you think, guys. How does this make you think? No, this didn't make you think. That's the fucking problem. You just saw it and reflexively were like, oh my god, this is sexist. I better uh, reblog this. You didn't think whatsoever, motherfucker. Jesus. Embarrassing. Just embarrassing. <sighs> Uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, if you agree with me or you disagree with me. And subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thank you very much for uh, listening to this uh, crazy fucking rant about magazines. Love you guys.